On June 11, 1963, James D. Hardy and his team performed the first lung transplant in the world. James D. Hardy and his team removed a lung from one person's body and placed it in another patient. Unfortunately, they were not successful. The patient who received the transplant survived only 18 days before passing away. Following this initial attempt, lung transplants continued from 1963 to 1981, with many unsuccessful attempts due to the body's rejection of the transplanted lung. In 1981, Dr. Bruce Wrights used a heart transplant technique to perform a lung transplant, which was successful for the first time in history. A heart-lung transplant involves transplanting both the heart and lungs, while a lung transplant specifically refers to replacing a diseased lung with a healthy lung from a living or deceased donor. In certain diseases, only one lung is transplanted, known as a single lung transplant, while both lungs are replaced in cases like cystic fibrosis, referred to as a double lung transplant. The question arises, why is a lung transplant necessary? When a person's lungs become unhealthy or damaged, it may be essential to replace both lungs. Without adequate oxygen, survival becomes difficult. Various diseases can damage the lungs, including cystic fibrosis, pulmonary fibrosis, and pulmonary hypertension. While medications and special breathing devices can treat lung damage, a transplant may be required when these methods fail. Before a lung transplant, both the donor and recipient undergo several tests, including chest X-rays, CD scans, cardiac function tests, and cardiac stress tests. Matching blood types and comparing lung sizes with the recipient's chest cavity are crucial. If all tests are passed, the surgery begins. During the operation, the patient is placed under general anesthesia, rendering them unconscious and pain-free. The surgeon makes an incision in the chest, removes the diseased lung, and places the healthy lung into the patient's body, connecting the blood vessels and airways. In some cases, a heart-lung bypass machine is used during the surgery to circulate blood. After the procedure, the patient is moved to the ICU and may remain on a ventilator for a few days to assist with breathing. They might spend two to three weeks in the ICU, and once their condition improves and they can breathe with their new lungs, they are discharged. Following discharge, the patient must utilize their lungs regularly for two to three months. The primary risk after a lung transplant is rejection. The immune system, designed to protect the body from foreign particles, may react to the new lungs, attacking and attempting to reject them. The likelihood of rejection is highest immediately after surgery, but decreases over time, 